Keeping it original is what it's all about for me. I challenge anybody to have a car in their collection that puts a bigger smile on their face than this does mine. This segment brought to you by Viper Chair. When you're lazy as shit, sit your ass down on a Viper Chair. Push your ass around the garage instead of walking. Okay, here we're talking about the uh, 1968 GTX convertible. Truthfully, ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is the one that started it all. I may have owned a 1976 Trans Am as my first muscle car. I didn't have any appreciation for it. It was just more like a, a thing to own instead of this. This was my second muscle car that I ever bought. First muscle car that I really started the collection with. I wanted to uh, strike up a couple boxes with the first vehicle. I wanted it to be a convertible. I wanted it to be a big block. I wanted it to be a four speed. And I wanted it to be a Mopar. The cool thing about this car is as everybody says, and most, mostly me, every car has a story. This being my first car, it's been with me since the beginning. Uh, I love the color. B5 Blue is my favorite Mopar color. It's the same color as my eyes. I'm intimately attached to this vehicle. I kept it for a number of years in Georgia, drove it a lot, and then moved to California. Obviously, it being a convertible, it's a perfect place to be driving a car like that. Kept it out there for a couple of years. Something came over me. I don't know what happened, but I sold the vehicle. I had seller's remorse, it was instantaneous. Sent a friend of mine to go purchase the car, Robert Genet, thank you very much, I appreciate it greatly. Uh, he went to pick up the car because quite obviously I'm not gonna call the owner uh, because he knew he'd probably get more money out of me trying to buy the car back because I showed my hand, right? So we did a little bait and switch, he picked up the car, he met my wife at a gas station right down the street, she jumps in the car, she pulls up to a stoplight and all of a sudden, a, uh, a plethora of mice ran out from underneath the dashboard across her legs, I think across her waist, and dispersed throughout the vehicle. So after that traumatic experience, she brought it back to the house. It had been stored outside for a number of years, which for a convertible, it's, it's not the best thing for it. Um, this car was one of 1,026 1968 convertible four-speed GTX or maybe GTX is not specifically four speed. I would imagine that number is, is much lower. But it was to the point where after it had been sitting outside, it did need a restoration. So I employed a shop up in Corona, California. It got to a point where they had the body completed with paint. They went out of business. I got the car back, it was a rolling chassis, and literally the interior and a lot of the engine compartment was in boxes. And so, I took it upon myself to put this car back together. I got to a certain sticking point. And what I would do was I would take all the mechanicals and I would restore them. I would bead blast them, um, or I'd find new old stock parts to completely replace them. You know, the traditionalists will look at your coil. They'll look at the tags on your seat belts. They'll look at anything on the vehicle that has any type of date code on it and make sure they all match up. Mark Warman came into prominence around that time, so I was watching Graveyard Cars. I didn't know Mark at all. I didn't know much about him, but I knew through watching the show that if there was any guy that I'd ever let touch a Mopar of mine, it would be Mark Warman. And we made a deal with him restoring the car, sent the car up there, it was in boxes. It was a cool experience for me because I got to meet Mark, I got to meet a guy who, who knew a hell of a lot more about these vehicles than I did, and any question that I had, I could immediately ask him and I'd get an answer. Keeping it original is what it's all about for me. You can only have it original once. And as I walk around this car, there is not one part on this car that I did not either take off, put back on, or replace. Whether it's the wheel moldings, whether it's the Magnum 500s, whether it's, now this is an aftermarket antenna. Um, 
I'll come clean with that. Um, but again, interior wise, this thing's 99% original. The rear valance, this did not come on the car. This is the one that came on the GTX hardtop. It was in much better condition and uh, that's why I swapped it out. The Argent paint on here is something specific to back in the day. And you'll see people restoring them and they don't do it the correct way. And uh, a, a, a purist will find it and they will expose it in a heartbeat. So again, looking at this car, the reason why it's in Goldberg's garage is because I have so many memories. Uh, I have a lot of hands-on time that I have spent with this car in trying to make it what it is today. And I would put this 68 GTX convertible 444 speed up against anyone on the planet as far as originality is concerned, as far as uh, current condition is concerned, and as far as happiness is concerned, I uh, challenge anybody to have a car in their collection that puts a bigger smile on their face than this does mine. Okay, hopefully you uh, were able to keep up with that long story. Enough talking, now it's time to drive. Whew, come on, bad boy. Really? No, this wasn't planned and welcome to live TV. It looks like 100% we have a battery issue. So what's next? We ain't driving the GTX yet. We're gonna get in the TRX and go get a battery. We have an errand to run and this is the reason. This tag on my forehead is from the current battery that was sitting in the GTX convertible. And as you note, uh, the battery is uh, nine years old. So, we're going to replace it. And on the way, we uh, are making our normal stop to Compadre's Hill Country Casino. Little brisket and a little dino rib action. So, stay tuned. I, I purchased the, uh, the convertible when I was playing with the Falcons. Yeah, I played with the Falcons from 91 to 94. I believe I purchased the vehicle in 93. Um, as I said, it was, it was, the, it was the first one uh, that started the, the craze, started the addiction. That's why, along with the Lawman, Superboss 429, I believe that those are the two vehicles in the collection that would never be sold. Today, we're gonna have to do a hit and run, food-wise. A lot of filming to do. Uh, he's closing up. He's got some Purple Heart Foundation responsibilities this afternoon. And so uh, we're gonna go grab a little care package and uh, say thank you very much. Uh, tip our hats to the Purple Heart Foundation and then get on the road, go get our battery and then load up in the GTX convertible and drive that bitch like it should be driven. Okay, as you can see, they're kind of closed up. So we're gonna make this a quick grab and go. Oh, I know you're busy, I'm busy too. Qu kind of quick hit and run, so I appreciate you getting some stuff together, man. So you got some dino ribs, you got some small chicken for Wanda, you got some uh, hamburger buns there to make yourself some brisket sandwiches, your raspberry sauce is there, but I also caramelized some bacon with that raspberry sauce. Ugh. So whatever I put the raspberry sauce on, put the bacon on it first, then the raspberry sauce on top of it. Oh my God. Do me a favor, tell everybody when the, the, uh, the gala is for the Purple Heart Foundation. <laughs> the gala, okay. So our fifth, annual, our fifth annual Purple Heart Project Gala is November 9th, all right? So we moved it up from August, July to November because it's, it's a little cooler. What day is that on? That falls on a Saturday. I hope, I hope Gage is playing, and I hope they're playing right down the street so I can do both at once. We will have a couple of tables open up for individual tickets, but we don't know just yet. How about online? 
How about online. if they just want to donate to the well, Purple Heart Project? Well, if they want to donate to the uh, the Purple Heart Project, you can go to www.purpleheartpro.org. Check it out. Go to the website that he just mentioned. Check out the Purple Heart Project uh, Gala. Check out um, any way that you can lend a helping hand, whether it's a donation or whether it's volunteering. We have so many events coming up in the future. The fact is, is that if you want to help, if you want to be a part of uh, making a veteran's life uh, more appealing, uh, happier, with better experiences in the future, then all you got to do is reach out. All the information is on yeah, this. Yeah, shoot that. Right here. And all the information is also Oh, it's perfect. So the contributions, you can take a picture of that, and yeah. it's all self-explanatory. Every day you make a positive difference, dude. Yeah, I can't thank no you enough, and, and thank you for letting me be a part of it. So, no go be a family man. It's the weekend. I, I love you. Thank you very much. Okay, next stop, battery replacement. Which leads me to question the age of all the other vehicle batteries. Ugh. Boom! Let's go start a GTX convertible. Absolutely no offense, Mark, whatsoever. But it's at least 20 minutes until we get back to my house. So, I gotta eat before we eat. Yes, we picked up food at Compadres, but I can't wait till we get home. So, I had to pick up a burger as a precursor to our wonderful late lunch. So for me to make it to lunch, I had to eat prior. I don't know, that's abnormal, but I'm a food connoisseur. Get in the garage, open up the hood, put this damn thing in its battery tray, hook it up, light it up, and pray to God that she starts. Take a nice drive, we get the sun out today. Take the top down, the first time in, I don't know, probably 10 years, and uh, see how she drives. Okay, got the battery. Cross your fingers. Okay, moment of truth. That will at least give us an indication whether it's gonna work or not. It was the battery. Let's go drive this some bitch.